My name is Lisa Skinner and I'm a lecturer in the geology program in the School of Earth Sciences and Environmental Sustainability. One time I was at the student union and I ran into um, a student of mine, I won't name names, and, uh, and he said, hey Mrs. Skinner, you know, hey it's so and so, how you doing? And we were, you know, eating lunch. And he said, what are you doing here today? And I said, I'm working, you know, just taking my lunch break. And he said, oh, I didn't think that teachers showed up outside of class. Um, and so it really hit me that I, th I think that, you know, a lot of students, at, when they come in at the freshman level, that they may think that, you know, teachers just sort of magically appear in the classroom and everything's all, uh, all complete and that, no, you know, we do a lot of things outside of the classroom to try and prepare for that. We do, you know, we do research, we try, we, we try to be the best that we can. So there's a lot of work that goes into that magical, you know, 50 minute performance. <laughs> it really has to go back to my first geology field trip um, as a sophomore student in undergraduate and our professor took us to this place called Calvert Cliffs, Maryland. And it's this um, little area along the Chesapeake Bay that has 10 to 20 million year old rocks that, that you can literally walk up to the cliffs by the ocean and pull these like, dinner sized plate fossils just right out of the cliffs. And they're just amazing clamshells and just amazing you know, um, the, you know, the type of marine fossils that you would find on a modern day beach, but just exponentially larger. And I just, I, I had never seen anything like it. And I, you know, I walked right up to the cliff and I just pulled this, this fossil out of the sand and I'm pretty sure it was 10 million years old and it still had the barnacles attached to it, you know. And I thought, this is just amazing, this is amazing. And we spent three days camping there. Um, and at nights our, our professor brought the nets and some of the fossils and shark's teeth and everything that were in the cliffs would, would weather out and like fall on the shore face. So he brought these nets and we would just stand in the wash in the waves and pick up all the sand and sift through the sand looking for all the shark's teeth. And I thought, this is like exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I was hooked and that was it. I don't think this thing is really expensive. It's a big bag of Bic mechanical pencils. Um, that seven millimeter size mechanical pencils, I think maybe it costs seven dollars. They have really good erasers, they never break. They don't break like the cheap mechanical pencils. And, um, and you know, I always tell my students to write in pencil because, um, well, some people may say, no, write in pen because you, you, should, you should know exactly what you want to write down the first time. But as a geologist, I always tell them to take notes in my class in pencil because we're drawing and we're doing all types of things. Um, and they have great erasers, you know, so certainly there's going to be mistakes made along the way. And those, I, I, have, I have a giant pile of those pencils. <laughs> I take them everywhere I go. <laughs> Everything. So, yeah, again, I was a first-generation college student. My dad is a police officer. My mother is a florist. Um, they said, we support you in anything we do, you do, but you have to go do it yourself because we don't know. Um, so there weren't really any resources for me. Um, and again, I think it was because I just didn't ask questions, um, but I didn't know. And the other thing I was thinking about is that Today, the students have, I think there's so much more awareness about financing education. Um, there's a lot of resources on campus. Almost everybody does it in some way, shape or form, either through scholarships or student loans or borrowing money from family. And it's talked about and people have, can give you advice for that. But when I was in school, which wasn't that long ago, but it was before 9-11, you know, sort of late 90s when everyone gave you a credit card and it didn't matter what, you know, you, you got like thousands and thousands of dollars of limit on your credit card and everyone gave you f student loans and it didn't matter how much it was or what interest rate it was. You just 
you know, applied for it and got it. It wasn't a big deal. And um, little did we know <laughs> that, you know, that, that the money just adds up. And so uh, it really does, it really does follow you. And I guess, you know, what do I want students to know? And this is kind of a theme of something I always tell them is just to ask questions. You know, go find the resources and don't do anything before you ask guidance from people who know better. And I, that's, I think that's one mistake that I made. So. I was pretty young when I started here, and I had a student who, at the end of the semester, ended up with a D and really just, just you know, was really struggling the whole time. And she had met with me a lot during the semester, and just couldn't get, you know, couldn't get to a C. And after the semester was over, and I've never had this happen to me since, she asked to have an appointment with me to talk about her grade pretty immediately after grades were posted. And she came in with her brand new baby. She had had a baby during the semester. She came in with her brand new baby and her partner. And we're actually standing in the room right across from here. And she said, I just really, really need a C in this class so that I can get admitted into the teaching program. And I think her grade was you know, borderline. It was like a 68 or something like that. And I never do this. I mean, I never, ever inflate people's grades. And I really felt, I, so we sat there and we talked for hours. And she was just begging me, you know, is there anything that I can do to bring up my grade to a C so that I can get into this teaching program? So ultimately, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to give her a C. And so I did. And I really, I forgot about the situation. And it was maybe Four years later, I was in the Target parking lot and I parked my car and she was standing there next to her car and she came up to me and she's like, Mrs. Skinner, I don't know if you remember me, but you gave me that C in that class and I just want to tell you, I'm in the teaching program now and I'm almost about to graduate and I've gotten all A's and B's. And like I almost sort of dropped to the floor because I had really forgotten about her. I had, you know, you move on, you have thousands of students. But that really made an impact on me because I tend to be very um, rigid uh, in my grading because I do have very large classes. But, you know, it really reminded me to consider everybody's got their own story, you know, and everybody's got their own struggles. And, you know, what really is the difference between a 68 and a 70 is honestly, it's, you know, in that class it was... 20 points, I mean, it could have been anything, just some silly little exercise. And that really made a difference in her life, you know, and there her daughter is, and, you know, and they're bettering their lives. That was an amazing experience. I don't think I'll ever forget it. Ask as many questions as possible. When I graduated from my undergrad, I knew I wanted to go get my master's degree. Um, I didn't get into almost every single school that I wanted to, but I got into NAU, and it was so it was such a time of uncertainty, and I just didn't know what to do and what should I do. So I just left Philadelphia and drove across the country to this place I'd never been to, you know. And when I got here, that was in 2002. I never left. So um, there, you know, if you if you ask questions and reach out and take the risks that you think are appropriate for yourself, I think things will work out, you know, and I, but it, my future is still uncertain. I still don't know what, um, what may come down the road for me, but um, I think that uncertainty is a fact of life. And it doesn't matter if you're in college or if you never went to college, if you never graduated high school, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're all completely uncertain. And things, uh, and you just, you know, you just have to sort of take charge, you know. And I feel like if you if you take charge, then you can be in control of the things that you can, and the rest is up to nature and the people around you. Absolutely, 
you learn how to think, you get outside of your comfort zone, you, you are exposed to a wide diversity of people um, from all over the world. You have opportunities to go all over the world. I think that it's almost necessary because when you graduate with a bachelor's degree, then you know it says that you have the commitment, right? And you have the gumption and you have experience. And, um, and really, what I really think that we're doing for our students is teaching them how to think. And if you know how to think, and think in different situations and different aspects and how to solve problems, then I think that regardless of what your degree is in, you're going to be successful. So absolutely it's worth it.